Hello fellow engineers and welcome back to City Skylines 2. Now recently I went a bit rogue. I did something that only a trained professional should do. I built a city based on architectural principles. An unnecessary amount of curves, roundabouts that go the wrong way. No respect for gravity. This poo goes straight downhill and through everyone's houses. No respect for physics. Air pollution travels straight straight downstream into people's homes and of course the biggest sin no respect for highway engineering now in the comment section of that video people were calling for my head accusing me of secretly being an architect for someone that hates engineering matt sure knows a lot about them etc etc well today my dear fellow engineers i will be proving my engineering prowess by fixing architopia so if I if I were an engineer, how would I fix this? I guess first thing to do is to actually see what the problems are. Now problems are we only we only have one person living here. We're losing money per hour. I do have nearly a million quid to spend fixing this place though, so that's good. Now I believe what drove everyone out was the architect's greed last time. If we look at the tax, yes, thirty percent tax. You can't. You can't pay more tax if you wanted to. So I'm going to lower taxes for everyone. Let's go to like, I reckon 10% is pretty fair. And uh, hopefully that will start attracting some some new population to here. Because we do we do have facilities. That's the one thing we have. Oh, wait, it's, it's dropped to zero. How did I? <laughs> I let the person living here pay less tax and now they've left. Um, man, where do I even start? Where do I start? <laughs> I should probably look at these warning lights. Okay, so what have we got? We got, okay, not enough electricity. We do have a coal plant up here. Presumably, though. Oh, it does have employees. I was going to say, presumably, no one works here. But, but people do work here. Has it got coal? It's just not producing electricity. Well, I think what would probably be worth doing is connecting this up to the grid. Because that could help with our with our money issues. So if we grab a power line, probably shove it under the ground. Because there's, there's houses here. But yeah, look, we got pylons over here. So if we connect that up. Our entire city is now connected to the external network. I was going to say, which means we're we're importing power, but are we are we not consumption production? Yeah, we're not we're not importing or exporting. Okay, so I think I I wasn't aware of this. I thought a coal power plant would do it, but I think I need a transformer station. Thirty grand. I think it's worth the investment though. So we'll shove that like there. We can connect that underground over to there, and then hopefully everyone has electricity. And oh man, look all the experience we're getting we've just we've just become a large village so yeah we're now completely importing electricity now we're getting so much xp <laughs> we've got oh well look we're back to one we're back to one population so electricity has helped look at all that xp is this like an xp glitch just take away electricity for everyone then put it back on i don't know but whilst that's distract stop distracting me stop with the nice noises but yeah right next problem i think is probably the the polluted water so at the moment this is everyone's drinking source now architect were just like right what does everyone need they need they need to be able to drink so we'll grab a water pump we'll shove it in the closest water source sorted they didn't think to actually check the water quality so everyone's been drinking liquid poop hence we've got dirty water in their houses not just physically but literally coming out the taps so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna be a safety up that xp still going what's going on <laughs> i don't understand why that's just flying up but yeah so whilst i look for a solution to that i'm not entirely sure what i'm gonna do permanently but i think for now let's just get more more medical clinics down so at the moment there's zero healthcare, so all that polluted water is just making people ill and yes it might seem a bit backwards to not actually fix the problem and just do a short-term thing but i gotta think short term because there's so many things to fix so i'll come back and fix the actual problem a bit later on uh, for now though oh look the coal plant is back up operational polluting the atmosphere however it's polluting everyone that lives down here so unfortunately guys we're gonna do a bit of reshuffling with your zones so basically anyone downstream hang on if we go to industrial you can see the wind direction so wind is going that way so since we've got loads of commercial over here we don't want anyone living downstream so i'm just gonna dezone all of these now you may say it's quite dramatic to 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 tell people to up sticks and leave. They've lived there their whole lives. But the thing is, if their lives are only like 12 years long, then are they really living? Right, okay. So I think that's pretty good. Everyone's 
They're up in sticks. You see, the houses have been condemned, so they should all get knocked down, replaced. I mean, that one actually collapsed because it was designed with architecture. All right, anyway, since we've moved houses from here, we need to put houses back in because, look, there's demand again now. People are hearing about this place. They want to move back in. Actually, that's probably the first thing I should have done change the name because architecture is just a reminiscence here so this is duct tapia because we've put a band-aid over this city we're gonna we're gonna be fixing it but yeah right i need to find a new spot to put houses unfortunately <laughs> there's there's loads of roads here which i don't know do they have oh they do actually have spots to put houses on okay let's satisfy demand first so let's get some houses in at least once people have started moving in and stuff, they'll pay some tax. We'll get the economy running and then we've got money to help fix even more issues. But at the moment, this is upstream of, of that. You can see like, look all the chimneys. They're all going the opposite way. So these houses, they will be safe up here as long as they're extremely competent drivers. <laughs> yeah, not gonna lie, that junction, it does sort of scare me a bit. <laughs> Oh, man, the state of some of these. But yeah, okay, I think the basics are sort of there. We just, we really need to fix this drinking issue. So I can't just, I can't just delete this. I can't just move it. I feel like that's cheating. So we'll probably have to turn it off, deactivate it at some point. Yeah, it will consume 10% of its normal upkeep in that phase. But I feel like that's just, that's just something I'm going to have to live with. Now, but yeah, first, I need to find a suitable source of drinking water. Now, you might think, well, Matt, there's big old sea here. Just, just pump that out yes but no as well because do you remember that other problem the architect's basic lack of understanding of gravity uh, all this all this poo currently flowing down that way will have to get diverted and it's probably since it's downhill it'll probably end up in the sea which means i'm gonna have to find an alternate source of water now the game does give you different options you can get a water tower i personally feel like that's cheating uh, there's also groundwater pumps now the only groundwater is here which you can see is heavily heavily contaminated because it's right under our industrial area. Oh, and actually, we've already we've already got a groundwater pumping thing there as well. Okay, we're gonna have to close that one down. Oh, you can actually see the polluted water like in the pipes. Can you see it's like all brown in the pipe? Yeah, that's not good. That's not good at all. So yeah, water pumping station, and I'm thinking maybe if we head up here we have a couple of freshwater lagoons so we can currently buy 12 map tiles which is good so let's buy both of those purchase and then we'll shove no that's a sewage outlet that was close that was close i nearly contaminated them straight away we'll shove a water pumping station in there i'll probably even upgrade this as well because look we got a whole 38 people to look after so yeah upgrade that okay that's in we then just need a road so i'm thinking we'll just go with like a little lane and while we're building on the road will show the contours because we don't want this road to be too steep trying to avoid trees because trees have been there longer than we have so it's not fair that they get chopped down just because i want my people to have drinking water so we will avoid trees unlike architects the contours here they start going like almost perpendicular with us so we want to curve around head over this way oh and look at that we've got we've got a road so we can attach there oh which is good but it's not good because if you look because we're driving on the right hand side and this is a one-way road people coming out will have to go left clashing with people like going in that way so these are sort of the wrong way around however we do have traffic lights which means it's not actually an issue if it was give way this would be an absolute nightmare but i think for now let's just we'll just leave that as is you can see our road over to here we got the pumping station. Uh, it's got it's got zero employees, so it's not very efficient right now. But it is it is pumping some water. So what I'm gonna do this groundwater pumping station, we're gonna turn you off. So that is now off. Where's the yeah the one in this poop lake that needs to be turned off as well. So off. Okay. So I think if you look at if you look at the warning signs, I think the fresh water is sort of flushing out the the polluted water. Oh, I was just wondering, could I see the polluted water? I can't really. I was hoping to see like some brown. Oh, I can. You can see. Like like brown particles they're like the poo particles in the pipe so as they're sort of getting flushed out the system the f <laughs> the people downstream like furthest away from the pump they're still drinking poo right now hey look it's going straight into that building being slurped up but now it's been flushed out so i think we've actually got rid of all the pollution sweet well i say we got rid of all the pollution there's still a lot of poo however there's there's an even more urgent emergency there is a house on fire and due to architecture of the last video there's no there's no firehouses anywhere i tell you what if i shove one if i shove one there can they actually get to this because it's all one way you wrote oh no they can't oh can they they can go up that way turn right turn right turn right 
to him. Okay, they can get to that. All right, we do have one employee there as well. So hopefully, if we fast forward, we should see a fire truck emerge and put this fire out before the house burns down completely. Yes. Oh, look. Where did they come from? But nice. Okay, they put it out. They put it out. Decent. All right. Anyway, that is good. We've we've solved another issue. The main issue now, though, is all this all this poo. As people are moving back in, they're pooing more, which means there's more liquids bursting out of there, heading down heading down that way. It's just literally turned this road into like like a poo canal, like the sewers canal. Yeah, there's just there's just so much poo. Like we are actually leaking it into the sea over this way. <laughs> literally going out of our map across the highway. <laughs> Oh dear. Right. Thankfully, this is where my actual civil engineering skills come into play because I was a drainage engineer for like 10 years. I mostly did surface water drainage on like highways. Uh, granted, it was never like poo water. It was actual rainwater, but similar sort of thing. Now, I'm going to fix this by using ditches. So basically, I want to divert the flow so it doesn't go down there. It goes down over that way, perhaps. Now, a little bit of a concern. We've got this absolute masterpiece. <laughs> the mini grid, which I may have to turn into like a real city. Let me know in the comments if you would actually like to see, can you build a city on this principle? Absolutely smallest grid pattern you can. Just roads everywhere. Could you build an entire city like that? But yeah, anyway, we we need to try and find a route for our, for our drain, our ditch. Now, obviously that doesn't put anyone at flood risk, but ideally it also reduces the, the amount of structures and stuff. So we don't really want to cross any roads. So I know we can go from here down that way between these two houses. We can't go across there. So we'll have to go down maybe this way. Then maybe here I could put like a bridge so that our ditch can go under it. And then we're over here. Oh, we've got to mine the tunnels though. I've I forgot about those tunnels. Oh, they're so dangerous. You've got tunnels with bends, with junctions, with traffic lights. That is just a death trap waiting to happen. Uh, but yeah, we'll fix that in a bit. I, I'm still I'm still working on the, on the ditch. So we don't want to go on top of that. So we have to stay tight to the back of this. But then we got straight line to the sea. Which, of course, we're allowed to pollute because the sea's massive. It'll be fine. It'll, it'll dilute. Okay, so when you're starting with with like a drainage ditch, at least whilst you're building it, you want to build it from downstream. I mean, actually, you want to design it from upstream, but you want to build it from downstream. Now, I'll explain why both of those, why we do those in real life. Uh, you design it from upstream because basically the more sort of stuff you connect. So let's let's say there wasn't just one poo outlet connected to this ditch. There was like several all the way all the way down that we had to connect up. If we start from the top, we can design a ditch size that it will take all of that water without overflowing. So we know it's not going to be too big. It's not going to be too small. It'll be just the right size. The Goldilocks ditch. But yeah, we can take that down to here. And then when another one connects in, because it will be another one with more flow, there'll be more poo going into it. Therefore, your ditch size will have to be a bit bigger. And then as you as you take that ditch down another one comes in that ditch has to be even bigger again so basically you should have up the top sort of small ditches small pipes whatever you're using in drainage at the bottom the pipes the ditches whatever they get larger and larger because they're taking they're taking like more flow essentially so that's why you design from the top the reason you don't like build it from the top is because if i just started my ditch here like before i've even like dug anywhere. It's going to be filled with water. It's then going to be overflowing. We're then going to have this problem again. But if you start from your outlet, you'll be rewarded with a grand village. <laughs> So now I've got a million quid. That's basically my bursary to build my ditch. Although actually, terraforming is completely free in this game for some reason. But yeah, so I'm going to say that I've done I've done all the calcs. I know exactly how big my, my, my ditch needs to be. So let's take it at like that level. We can then go up this way. And uh, what you'll notice is because I've done I've done that with the level terrain tool, uh, not only is like the sea seeping in, like this is just going to fill with water, but it gets deeper and deeper. Like that ends super deep. This ends quite shallow. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and keep the same sort of depth. So if I right click there and then just say, right, make it that deep instead. I can then use this, the slope terrain tool. I can right click up there. So that's the level I want to end up at. Down here, I can then start re-sloping. And nice. Now it's pretty much the same depth the entire way. It's sloping all the way down. So as the as the water comes in, or the, the poo water, it should flow down to the sea. Lovely. But over here, we've got, we've got our first issue. We've got the road. Now, there is a house there. It looks like it's abandoned. Yeah, it's condemned. So that will be going. Let's just give them a helping hand there. Boosh. But yeah, 
basically, we need to build our ditch there. Now, because there's already a road, we're going to have to put some sort of bypass in. Because uh, you can't just delete the road because, look, then these guys are not connected to anything. They all lose their road and stuff. So before we delete that, we would go and put a bypass in. So what we're going to do, we're going to head this way, connect up to that. Because then people, yeah, this... <laughs> It's a long, it's a long, it's a long diversion, but it is a diversion. So everything is still connected. We can then delete this road. We're then good to put our ditch in across there and then work out where we're going next. So yeah, it's up here, isn't it? So what I probably want to do up this way, do shift to rain tool so like that. Then I'll do the level tool and try and take a level like there-ish. Fill that in. And then as before, slope terrain tool. Now we've got some vegetation coming up. I don't mind too much about vegetation, but I think I want to avoid the tree at least. So I probably should have gone like north of the tree, but we've gone, we've gone south. So right next to this hospital, but that's fine. <laughs> Oh, we fine. But yeah, you can see now, although the ground does like various different things on the slope, this this floor, like the base of this ditch is a completely like flat grade, which basically means the poo is always going to be traveling at a constant speed. So that's good. All right. So one final bit then we'll do shift to rain tool. We'll do it to there. And then our ditch is it's just got to like thread the needle between these buildings like that. There we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Pause. Pause. <laughs> I shouldn't pause. Pausing is not allowed. That log pile, it's it's got to go. It's got to go. <laughs> right, right click. Get rid. Get rid. Yeah, I should have checked the planning conditions. People are not allowed to build on here anymore. Right, so nice. The log pile is gone and you can see, oh, the poo is flowing. We haven't even made it up there yet, but the poo is already flowing down this street. Oh, look at it go. It's actually working. Okay, so yeah, all we've got to do, take this ditch up a little bit further. So level terrain tool up to there. Make sure it's got a bit of a slope on it. There we go. Right, nice. Then the poo is going going straight into there. We've got we've got our drainage ditch in. Uh, because this is quite a tight bend though, I probably want to add a bit of a berm on this side just in case we get like, if we get like a, a turtle surge or something. Well, we don't want it to come over this bank and flood down there again. So we'll add a small little berm uh, just so it's less likely to leak. Now in real life, you'd probably use something called like Gabin baskets. Now they're just like wire baskets filled with stones. You often see them on like the edges of like rivers and stuff. But uh, basically, they're just a very cheap way of allowing you to like make make like a reinforced bank. Because if this was just dirt, then like, well, you've heard you've heard of erosion, haven't you? So that would just erode, and then eventually the poo would leak onto the road again. So you'd probably use gabion baskets. You may just use like big boulders or something. Or if you're really concerned, you'd use like a retaining wall, like a big concrete wall. And to be honest, depending on the flow velocity of this water, like if the if the speed was quite fast, it does actually look quite fast. Like if we turn up. It Look how fast that is flowing. We would probably go around and basically like the edge of all these buildings, any bends and stuff, or maybe the entire thing, you would probably line it with some sort of erosion protection. Erosion poo protection. Get it? Because it's poo. But yeah, this is just City Skyline, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But basically, that should be issue solved. So poo water comes down there, it comes to here, and then it will flow out to the sea. You can see it's still, even if we speed up, it's still heading down that way. So it'll take a while till it's down there. But then it's someone else's problem. We don't have to worry. Lovely. Uh, what I need to do now, come back, and I gotta, I gotta put this road back in. Because remember, this was just a temporary diversion. So the permanent solution... Of course, it's a bridge. Right, okay, so that's the little bridge I've put in. You can see doesn't restrict flow in the slightest. So that is good. Everyone's connected up there. I could probably delete the temporary diversion. I may... No, I should probably delete it, actually, because that's just that's just road we have to maintain. Okay, sorted. Right, if we head back up here now and we just have a little look, have we fixed the problem? Yeah, I don't see any poo flowing. I still see some houses still have the remnants. I'm like, not going to lie, that's not really a hammock. I want to lie in. I mean, at least your feet will be dry, unlike if you're playing football over here. By the way, the detail, like, on these got, like, they got the holes in, so you can, like, aim for specific areas to try and get a goal. Although, placement, I assume, is that, like, hockey or something? Why is that in front of a greenhouse? Come on, devs. Bit of realism, please. <laughs> But yeah, oh, as you can see, though, that, that poo water, it is evaporating. Evap-poo rating. 
leaving behind just a nice little crust of poo that's hardened. But yeah, you can sweep that up. That'll be fine. No one will ever know. So yeah, we're just waiting for everything downstream to sort of drain away. And then that issue has literally gone. So duct tapia, things are looking well. We're up to 400 people already. Incredible. Right, let's have a look. What are people concerned about? Yeah, there's high crimes. So the remnants of architecture remain, which architecture is a crime. So basically there's crime everywhere. So what I got to do, I got to invest in police. So let's get a police station in. I reckon one there for the right side of town, one over here for the left side of town. Yeah, because now most areas are green. You can see that area in there. It's bright red. This is probably like architecture gangland, but yeah, it's literally under pylons. So it's probably going to be like some shoes dangling from them where you can like go buy architectural drawings, but you're never going to get rid of all the crime in your town. That's what I'm saying. There's always going to be like gangs of architects, but if we can make the majority of the city crime free, then I for one will be very, very happy. All right. Okay. The other issue we've got, I can see people are dying. That's fine. People, they do just die. Uh, the issue we have is there's nowhere to put the dead. So I'm going to two bird one stone this because the other problem we have lack of entertainment. So why don't I build a cemetery? I think maybe plonk it over here sort of out the way a bit because then store your dead. Also go for a nice little walk, nice little wander, be entertained because this cemetery does not just have gravestones and stuff. It also has like boulders and fountains. I mean, there's also like a bandstand. We could get like the Beavles reunion tour in there or something. So yeah, that's good. What isn't good? There is a lack of labor. Now why is that? Is it just due to the number of people? I think it's due to the number of people. Like, there's a lot of demand for housing. Now, the question is, <laughs> where do we actually want people to live? I don't really want to keep building on this this mental area. Like, look at the state of these roads. I'm going to have to fix these roads at some point. But I tell you what, let's buy these two plots. Purchase. And buy these two as well. And then maybe from our initial roundabout, we'll do like a sort of bypass thing. So we'll avoid this nonsense of curvy roads for no reason and stuff. And I predict this will be quite quite an important road. So let's let's unlock some some large roads. That sounds like a good idea. So from our roundabout, we'll then do <laughs> We'll then do an eight lane road. I predict this road will be very, very popular. We'll bring it up this way. We're going to have to go around the trees, around the poos. Okay, I destroyed both those trees and, and I got poo on the road. Do as I say, not as I do. But then from here, we can just head over this way under the pylons, destroy a few houses. I mean, people can't get to those houses anyway. They got the they got the no access symbol, so I'm not worried. We'll go up to about here, do a bridge over that road, unlock roundabouts. And then up here, we've got a massive old roundabout so that traffic can go around the roundabout island. Thank you. And then use this road. Now, people are already using this road. It's a beautiful stretch of road, a complete bypass of the city. But what I'm going to do from here, I'm going to add like loads of new housing, basically. So junction coming off, then I'm just going to use the grid tool. Yes, I said grids are evil, but they're also easy. <laughs> Right, then any junction that's a horrible giveaway crossroads like that, we will just round about up like that. Right, so let's grab our low rent housing. We'll shove that probably in the middle, like that sort of thing. We probably want some shops around it, to be honest. Then we got demand for medium density. So we'll surround those shops in medium density. And then we'll surround the rest in low density housing. Now I'm going to try and make the area a bit more a bit more attractive as well. Let's shove a little small park in there. Boosh. Right, and then then the game will crash. Cheers for that. But then I've reloaded to find I'm a tiny town. Yay. Okay, so the next fix I need to do is it's worrying me dreadfully. This tunnel. Now I've got six points. Have I already unlocked? Yes, advanced road services. That's good. So I think using this tab here, road services. Yeah, I can say no right turn. So there. Can I ban people if I click there and there? No left turns as well. Yeah, you can see the arrows on the road. Now I think no one can actually turn down there. Is that... Oh. <laughs> oh, dear. He... Okay, that, that doesn't work at all. Okay, every, everyone's going down there still. Not ideal. Okay, how do I stop people going down a tunnel? I guess if I can't force them, I need to make it worth their while. So at the moment, they're going down there. They come out this side. So it's a shortcut over to here. Perhaps what I could do then is try and 
fix this absolute mess of curvature, perhaps by literally just doing like a straight through. Then we'll be around there. Then we can just go from there onto that road. So now I've made it way quicker to get to here. The tunnel comes out there. So maybe if we were to come out that way, we could head around the back of here down to there without sacrificing any houses or anything. And what I might do, I think I just, I built this for experience last time, didn't I? Well, and for architecture. But if I swap those with a four lane two way road, just give them a bit of an upgrade, then people can go like any direction. So yeah, just going to upgrade all these roads. All I'm basically doing here is just painting a line down the middle and probably changing a few traffic lights. But yeah, now everyone can go any direction they want to, which... <laughs> How are we going to fix this? <laughs> oh, dear. Like, no one can drive up that, surely. Oh, he actually can. I thought, he, I uh, honestly thought they got stuck then. All right, what about this police car? Oh, that one went straight. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it drove straight up the ridge. Like, when you're down at ground level, you can see how dangerous that was. <laughs> how do I fix this? How do I even fix it? Actually, we don't need, we don't need that road. That's a dead end going nowhere. So that is probably something I could delete. Oh, the game won't even let me delete it. <laughs> The game's like, no, you're not deleting that. But what is that police car doing? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, maybe maybe that's what's happened. Because architects were in charge of the roads, engineers decided to design vehicles and therefore they can defy gravity. See, engineers always find always find solutions to problems. Question is, has my shortcut prevented people from using the tunnel? Let's just speed up and see if anyone goes down. Doesn't look like it. Everyone's using my shortcut. Yes, we improved road safety. All right, something I haven't fixed yet is this. <laughs> This area here, absolutely horrific grid, surrounded by rubbish. I mean, actually, I do have I do have a quick fix I could do. There we go. We've made it its own sort of area, its own district. So that is perfect. Oh my goodness, happiness. People are happier than ever. They want some internet. I can arrange for that. Unlock them a telecom tower. Give them some internet so they can tweet about, sorry, not tweet, so they can X about how good my city is. And yeah, we're over a thousand people. We're a tiny town. I feel like this this place I've actually I've actually made a decent town. I basically did my day job for the last 10 years of polishing a turd. This place is definitely habitable now. It's definitely a successful city although it is held together with duct tape. I think we can be proud of what we've achieved here today. So on that note I'll say peace love and the power of engineering. Bye!